God who lives outside the limits of time is the only one who knows the fullness of time. We don't know. The best we can do is we can resolve to have a vision to walk if it's another thousand years before he comes, but yet live it with the urgency that he'll be coming back tomorrow. That's the fullness of time. There are some perfect, more than perfect markers of God through our little history of time. Now, the thing about this timeline, I said it was at two levels. One is you can take and look at this as the history of all mankind. There was a time mankind started. There's a time mankind will end as far as in this earthly material sense. But this is also your life and my life. Before you were ever created, there was a time God was already making his plans for you. There was a perfect time that he came into your life. There was a perfect time he came into your heart. There was a perfect time, and it will end. And then the time will end. And, uh, and that really has some important implications for us because it means then there is a perfect time for us to choose. If this is when he came, at some point there is a perfect time to choose Christ. There is a perfect time, a time unlike any other time in your life when you will choose to follow him. Unlike any other time. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, For he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. It means that there is also a perfect time to start living what you know. A perfect time to start living what you know. None of us are uh, Billy Graham out of the box. We start like a seed. We start, and then we follow, we follow, we follow. Here is, uh, uh, here, true confessions. As I looked at this, this verse that I have read many, many times, something I didn't know popped out in a big way. Ephesians 5, uh, 15 through 17, really, it says this, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time. Because the days are evil, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Walk circumspectly, redeeming the time. And you know that word redeeming that is used there? It, it means to save or rescue that which was lost. The word for you redeeming the time is the same word used for Christ redeeming you spiritually. It's the same word used to describe what the cross did. You redeem the time. There is a perfect time. But here's the thing with this. If we're looking at this, God has more than perfect time when he came and did what he did. And there is a perfect time. That is a time unlike any other in your life when you're the most likely to choose. And you are most likely to really start a walk with Christ. Well, if there is a perfect time, that means that outside of this time, everything else is less than perfect. Everything else is less than perfect. And if it's less than perfect, if, if you weren't moved at the perfect time, then what are the chances of being moved at the less than perfect times? There is perfect timing, a perfect time in which we build our perspective, a perfect time where we start to understand what God really has us to do in this string of our life. And everything else then becomes not necessarily impossible, but it is less than perfect. What a beautiful start in this, in this series in dealing with this first point. God's timing is perfect, more than perfect question is really, how's our time? How are we doing? How's our time? Something for us to consider.